Hey, hey y'all. Welcome. Welcome back to my channel, Faith to Faith. My name is Louise Calixt and I have been MIA. I am so sorry. I have not um, recorded anything in the last couple of months. I took a extended break. It's no excuse. I just got tired and um, I haven't been recording in a while. I just want to say shout out to video and content creators. It is a lot of work editing, recording. Sometimes it's anxiety inducing and it's, it's completely not easy. So when you see people out here like recording, just know it's not easy. But a couple of people um, came up to me and said, hey, what's up with the videos? And I said, oh, they're coming, they're coming. And those were subtle hints that God was sending. But then in my time of prayer this week, he really, in a not so subtle way, said, hey, Louise, it's it's time to get back in and, and record these videos. Nice to know that, you know, that it's um it's important to the heart of God. The things that we do, we think they're not important, but God does really care. So I was like, yep, you're absolutely right. I need to get back on the content and just share with whatever the Lord lays on my heart. So... Um, before we get in, I just hope that you've been well. There's been a lot going on in the world. There's been a lot of violence, you know, so many things going on, death, mayhem, just people being terrible to one another. So I'm praying that you're well. I'm praying that your family is safe. And I'm praying that, you know, even in the midst of such difficult times that your heart is anchored and secured. So what God laid on my heart for today is... Um, the topic of are you sick and tired of church and have you felt like you've reached a spiritual plateau? Just getting my notes out real quick. Okay. Um, so here's a few questions I just wanted to ask you. Okay. Have you been feeling powerless and passionless in your relationship with God? Has your relationship with the church soured because you can't stand inauthentic classist, hypocritical, and self-righteous attitude of church people in the church in general? If some of these questions are hitting, then this is definitely for you. Um, you know, before we start, I just want to just, just kind of affirm someone that if you're feeling this way, um, it's, it's normal. It's normal. It's not the feeling that's the problem. It's what is your response? What are you going to do about it? That's the issue. Sometimes the church will make you feel like you're a backslider or you're an unbeliever because sometimes you may feel like this just isn't right. And, and you may feel very bad about the things that you're feeling about the church, but it, it really is completely normal. In some cases, God, what's happening is that God is using these feelings, these negative feelings that you're having to call you up higher. But again, um, it's really about how you respond. So I really hope that um, this thing that I'm talking about will really um, be relevant to you. It will really hit in a way so that people that are stuck and feeling like this, like really stagnant in their church going or in their spiritual life, will feel like they have some tools where they can go forward. Okay, so we're going to base our um, topic on this story in 2 Kings 7. It's in 2 Kings, the chapter 7. I really, really encourage you guys to just go and read this story. It's just an amazing story. It's so interesting. So I'm going to go through it. I'm not going to read everything, but I'm going to give you a little bit of context so that we can talk about um, how this is relevant to you feeling sick and tired of church and feeling like you've hit a spiritual plateau. So in this story, Samaria is under siege by King Aram. Now, if you know a little bit of history of the Israelites, the Israelites have word that the kingdom of Israelite was torn into two. There was the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom remained um, Israel, the kingdom of Israel, whose capital was Samaria, and the southern part um, became the kingdom of Judah, and the capital was Jerusalem, okay? So what we're talking about is the kingdom of Israel, and the capital is Samaria. So Samaria is under siege by an enemy. His name is King Aram. So 
under siege, meaning that the whole army had surrounded the, the outer city gates, okay? So they're outside, encamped outside, which means that nobody can go out, nobody can come in, which means necessary supplies, food, resources are not coming into the people within the city gates. It's a tough situation to be in, no resources coming in. So what happens inevitably is that a famine is upon the city. There is a famine in the city. Now, because of the famine, people are just going crazy, okay? You're, the king is hearing such crazy um, news of what the people are doing because of the famine. People were like resorting to cannibalism. So they're out there eating each other's children. There's this really disturbing story of a woman, two women that make a pact. And one says, hey, one night we'll eat your child and the next night we'll eat my child. And so the other woman agrees and she gives her child to be eaten. And then the next day when it's time for the other woman's child to be eaten, she hides her child. It's just really disturbing, disturbing instances. Uh, this story talks about these four lepers who are outside the city gates. And they're literally sitting within the city, uh, outside of the city gates, determining what their next move should be. Now, you have to understand the situation of these lepers, okay? If it's bad for regular folks within the city, you can imagine how bad it was for these lepers because they're pretty much considered the bottom of the barrel, okay? Um, they have this contagious disease that everyone's afraid of, so they literally, they're isolated. They can't commune with people. They're like the rejects of society. Nobody is really out there trying to think of what can we do to save the lepers. So they're pretty much on their own, which is why they're outside the city gates. And these are the thoughts they're thinking. They said, if we go back into the city, we're going to die. There's no resources. Even for the wealthiest and regular of people, they're suffering. So us, there's no chance. And they're like, if we stay here, we're going to die. You know what I mean? Yes, we're outside of the city gates, but we're, we're going to die. So what should we do? Now, I love, I, I, I just love the outline, like the, the layout of this situation, because really, to me, this represents the situation of the church. Um, I believe that, you know, the church has been under attack. The church is under attack by enemy forces. The enemy is attacking the church. And there is literally a spiritual famine within our church, okay? Um, we are devoid of the spirit of God. We're devoid of love. We're missing all these things. And a lot of people on the inside are dying, are spiritually dying. And as you can see, what people are doing is that they're, they're, they're so hungry in the story that they're engaging in cannibalism. They're eating each other. And doesn't it feel sometimes that's what's happening in the church? People are literally like, they have, uh, they're not being sustained by um, the word of God. They're not being sustained by the love and the fire of the Holy Spirit and what's happening they have nothing better to do than to eat one another. Like within the church, people are, uh, you know, uh, tearing down one another, um, just breaking people down, gossiping, all sorts of things. And that's because we're not preoccupied with the things of God. We're just spiritually dying. So I think of the people in the city as our 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 old timers, our people that have been faithful, the backbone of the church. And I have to give just such, such a honor and salute to our, our founders of our churches, you know, um, people that have been there from the beginning, working hard. You know, I remember being a kid and seeing adults working within the church. And even right now in my age, I'll go back and they're still in the same position, just working hard. They're tired. They're just, you know, they're, they're, they don't have the energy they had back in the day, but they're still working. Mm -hmm. There's something about the loyalty and the, the duty filled, um, mindset 
of our old timers, of our, our of our the people, the backbone of the church. Um, they're so faithful, and I, I really truly give honor to that. Now, the people like the four lepers who are outside of the city gates, I represent that as like the younger generations. And remember, the younger generations can include up to 50s. You know, um, millennials now are in their 40s at this point. So I think some of the, you know, some of the gen gen. Xers, you know, and Gen Yers and the millennials and all these people, I think they comprise of that group. You know, we're kind of on the outskirts of the church. And why is that? Is that we see the problems and we see the spiritual famine in the church and we kind of like stand outside of the gates because we're like, we see the people dying in the church and we're like, hey, if we stay in the city, we're going to die. Okay. If we stay in the city, we're going to die though. I salute the mindset of our founders and I really applaud them without them, without the bones and the structure of the body of Christ, we wouldn't be where we were, where we are right now. We wouldn't have the structure, but you know, I think some of their, the methods is to kind of ignore the famine and to just keep trudging, keep going, keep going. And in one way, there's honor in that, but in others, it's like, that's not how revival starts. That's not how change happens when the problems of the church are completely ignored. So this is the situation that the lepers are in. And I feel this is the situation that many of the new generation and younger, how they feel they are outside. We are outside the city gates because we see the famine in the city and we're like, if we stay in the city, we're going to die. Let's go back to our story. So the lepers are considering all this stuff. And then one of them decides to say, hey, why don't we go surrender to the enemy? And maybe perchance they will like let us live and they'll maybe give us some food to eat. It was really a bold, daring idea to say, hey, there might be a chance. And literally this bold idea is born out of desperation because if we go in the city, we're gonna die. If we stay here, we're going to die. We literally have no choice but to just see what may be beyond these borders and see if there could be a chance. They literally said, if they kill us, hey, they kill us. But maybe this is the only solution with a possible chance. And I love the, the bravery and the courageousness of these four lepers that decided to just go forward and see what may be there, maybe that they could be saved. So basically, as they go, what they did not know is that in the middle of the night, you know, um, it had already been prophesied by the prophet that, um, by the prophet Elisha, that things would turn around for Israel. The famine would be done quickly, okay, by the next day, okay? But these lepers moved forward. And what they did not know is that the Lord sent like a sound. And the Aramean army was hearing the sound. And it sounded like a, a big army to them or, or soldiers coming. And what happened is that they ran off. To, they just, they ran. They saved their life. They left everything in the camp and ran for their lives. So when the lepers decided to go forward and see what may be beyond them, it's like they came upon plunder. They came upon treasure. It was like a miracle. No one was there. Instead, they had food, they had gold, they had resources, they had so many things. And these lepers went crazy. They feasted like kings, you know, they enjoyed all that was left for them. It was a miracle. They were, they were just amazed. Okay. In terms of our context and our situation, I know you're wondering, Louise, does that mean we should go into enemy, enemy territory? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that as, um, as a younger generation, if we feel that we're dying spiritually within the churches, um, you know, and we're outside the city gates, we can't just sit there complaining 
about the conditions back in the city. And we, we do that a lot. We just sit there complaining. We need to actually go forward. And to me, the plunder that these lepers fell upon represents just the plethora of resources that we have that the Lord has given us, you know, um, uh, to find out more about God, to fulfill our spiritual hunger. We have pad podcasts, we have blogs, we have videos, we have online church, we have um, so many different things. We could take a plane and fly out to a, a ministry event, to a conference. We have so many things. God has laid up so much treasure for us for which we could supplement um, our, the hunger that we're experiencing. We literally have no excuses. You know, if the church that you're attending is not hitting your spiritual thirst, there's so much available to us. Now, I want to say that why, you know, I compare this with like enemy territory. It's because we did in some instances, the churches, you know, some people with a small or limited mentality felt like the new technology and the new evolving methods and ways to preach the gospel, they did consider them evil. Do you guys remember back in the day when ministries were starting to do online um, online ministries? They started, you know, uh, broadcasting things via media. And some people were already starting to do like online church. I mean, a lot of preachers used to call this like a, a, a plan of the enemy. Like they used to say that, you know, these things being broadcast is, is wicked and evil because it's going to... Um, reduce or weaken church attendance. And those who listened to them weren't ready for the shakeup of the pandemic. And what some considered evil back in the day is basically the tool and vehicle and driving force for, um, for, the, gospel to, for the gospel to be spread in these days because the pandemic shook us like nothing else could. The pandemic literally took away our our common resources and ways of, um, you know, gathering and attending church and really shook us up. And those who weren't ready, those with the limited mindsets, they just weren't ready for what was to come. And those who were ready, they prospered and they really, really, their numbers grew and their numbers multiplied, which is why I tell, you know, which is why I say to everyone, you know, be open to the move of God. Be open to the move of the spirit. It may not look like what you think is right. Sometimes it may not look like your traditional means, but that doesn't mean it's not God. And it behooves everyone to take the time to not sit there and arrogantly say like, oh, this is wicked and evil without asking God, you know, Lord, what is this? Is this of you? Is this of your spirit? Is this a way in which your gospel could be could be expanded or reached to a, to a bigger audience? So yes, there's some points where some people, think that, you know, new and different and evolving technology is evil. But again, it's just another way that God uses to expand the gospel. So these lepers enjoyed and they enjoyed and they enjoyed their, their, their find. But something, something told them, they, they, their consciences were pricked and they said, we do evil by not going back to the city and telling them what we have found. We can't just keep this to ourselves. It's not right. And what they did is they went back to the city to tell them what had happened. Interestingly enough, some people, when they heard the, when they heard the news, had no faith and said, hey, this is a trick of the enemy. This is a trap. This is, this is just not, this is a trap that the enemy has set for us and they didn't believe. But eventually, eventually they went out and checked and they saw that what the lepers had seen was correct and everything changed for Israel within a moment, okay? It's like the famine was all of a sudden like eliminated and in fact, 
what was, you know, a famine became basically surplus, like their fortunes changed within one day. It's so, so amazing. So going back to us, those who are sick and tired of church at this point, and those who feels like you have hit a spiritual plateau, in this day, God is saying, go forward. You see, sometimes God allows us to hit a plateau because he wants us to go to a higher level. He wants us to uh, to really know him in a deeper and different way. See, the thing about us as humans, we tend to really get settled in our resources. Like we love the fact that we get paid bi-weekly, you know, that check is good old faithful coming in, you know, we able to get our checks, we do what we got to do. And then we love going to our same old grocery stores. We love going to our same old places to get what we need. We like that certainty. And the thing about God is that He'll always shake us up because at the end of the day, God doesn't want you relying on the resources. He wants you relying on him. So he will shake you up a little bit. If your only form of like connection with God has been the church and your pastor feeding you, you know, there come seasons when you will be shaken. Okay. Because then you have to um, look to God for, for more. You have to look to God so that you don't suffer from hunger and famine. And you can see that throughout the Bible. Like God was feeding his people through all sorts of different means. At one point, he was feeding the Israelites from manna falling from bread. Then the season changed and he, he was feeding them through, the, through the, the sweat of their brow as they worked the land. You know, the prophet received food from the mouth of, of, of a raven. And then the next thing he would switch it up and say, this widow who actually has no food, who has no money, she's going to be the one to feed you. Um, you know, God is always switching things up because he wants you to know that I am the one you need to rely on. I am the one you need to depend on, not the actual resource, but I am the creator. I am your provider. I am the one who feeds everyone. I feed you. I feed the creatures of this universe. And I am the only one who should be your sustainer and provider. So the thing is, God will sometimes shake you up to get you to a next level, to get you to a new level. The ways that the Israelites had depended on for resources and for food in the city, they weren't getting them. So it caused the lepers to go outside of the city gates. Okay. That's why they were there. If you are a younger generation, you're a millennial, you're younger, or even, you know, this doesn't have to just be an age thing. It could be just your heart. You're feeling, you're feeling hungry and thirsty and, and, and famished by what the church is giving to you. You know, it's the time to just sit back and evaluate and ask God, where should my source of food be coming from? How can I get my um, nutrition up, my spiritual nutrition up at this point? It's not a bad thing. It's God calling you higher. But I have to say something to our generation um, and anyone who's actually going through this where they're feeling just angry and hurt by the church. You know, God has allowed you to feel unsettled so that you can go higher and learn more from him because you can't completely rely on the church to feed you all there is to know. God is going to customize your learning. God is going to customize what he needs you to know. And he needs you to know the deep things of God. He has mysteries that he wants to share with you. He said, I will show you um, uh, deep and unsearchable things that you do not know of. And sometimes you can't depend on your pastor to do that. Your pastor is there to give you a solid foundation, to give you a strong foundation, but then your teacher has to go from your pastor to God. Some people won't tell you that, but I'm telling you that your teacher has to be God. God will customize your learning according to what your purpose is. Your purpose may be intricate and complex and of a, of a, a different audience, a bigger audience. He's going to customize 
you're learning to what you need to know. And your pastor can't customize your learning, but God can because he knows you and he knows your destiny. So there's a certain point your learning has to go from the church to God. Your instructor, um, the Bible said there will come a point that every man should know God for himself. That means God is your instructor, not your pastor for always, you know, God is the one that's going to teach you. So he's using that unsettling feeling to bring you higher, to ask questions that's going to have you go from church to God as your teacher. But there comes a point after you have filled yourself up. You have filled yourself up and you are full. We have to go back and tell people about what's going on, which is why even God got on me this week and he says, you need to go back. You know what I mean? Um, that's good that you're learning and you're getting full spiritually, but you need to go back and share your light. You need to go back and share with the people that are in the city that are spiritually dying. And that doesn't mean that they're going to believe you because guess what? To them, you're a leper. You're young. What do you know? But it was the four lepers that changed the trajectory of the nation. Okay. It was a rejected group that came back and saved the, the, the kingdom of Israel at that point. So we're young, um, as millennials, even though we're in our forties, but next to like the old school, the patriarchs and the matriarchs, we're young. Okay. And for them, they've seen it all. And sometimes they think, Hey, but guess what? You know what I mean? If the lepers could change the, the, the trajectory of the nation, we can change the trajectory of the church. By going back, allowing God to teach us and then going back and shedding our light. It's not enough to just sit there and trash the church and just say we're leaving. Yeah, take a break if you need to because church hurt is real. For those who don't believe that it's real, it's really real. Church hurt is real. Take a break. Learn of God. Learn his ways. Learn his goodness. Learn who he, re he really is. But then by, by all means go back because the God that we serve, his heart is still with the people that's left in the city dying spiritually. We can't not not go back and share that we have food, okay? And not everyone will accept it because remember, when they went back, some people said, oh, it's a trap of the enemy. They'll say, hey, what, what God taught you is not it. You know what I mean? That's a trap of the enemy. But still, there will be people that will listen and they're going to go and check out what you said. And they're going to see the treasures that God has laden up for his people and um, their trajectory, their course, their fortunes are going to change. So share the light. So, okay, I'm going to wrap up by saying if you are sick and tired of church and you have reached a spiritual plateau, step number one, acknowledge your state. Acknowledge that you are thirsty. The first Beatitudes, which I've never understood for a long time, blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall be filled. Um, you know, I never really understood that beatitude. Like poor in spirit, what does that mean? But it, it means that those who recognize their need for God, they shall be filled. And I believe filled with the Holy Spirit. When you acknowledge, Lord, I am thirsty, I am hungry, and there is a famine in my heart. God will meet you where you are and he will feed you. He will feed you because he's that kind of a God. He will feed you with so much good spiritual food. You will be filled, okay? So acknowledge the state of your heart. Acknowledge that you are in a famine, in a spiritual famine. Two, ask God to lead you to spiritual food. Ask God for discernment. Ask God for wisdom, you know, and sometimes it's going to, a require taking a risk because be open to where God leads you. It may not be where, what you know you've been taught growing up. It may not be what you thought it was, but why would you? You're human and you're limited. Of course, God is greater than you. Of course, God is bigger than you. Of course, he's more mysterious. I feel like one of the problems of the church is the self-righteousness, the way that you feel like it's always been. That's the way it's always supposed to be. But that's what got people tripped up in the Bible. Okay. It went from uh, a people who thought there were multiple gods 
okay, to believing in one God. And now this, this triune God, you know, with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And those who couldn't move with God, um, they missed out on God. Yes, God is never, ch God doesn't change. He stays the same from generation to generation. But our understanding of God gets bigger. It expands. It evolves. Because if you knew everything there was to know about God, guess what? You'd be God. And you, my friend, are not God. Okay, so we grow and we, we 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 understand more about God, and He evolves. And God will break the limitations you have in your mind about who He is. Think about it like this: When I was a baby, my mother gave me a certain food. But what would it look like if she kept on giving me the same food I was getting as a baby when I became a teenager? It doesn't make any sense, guys. So as we get older and get mature, God is going to switch up the food. It's going to switch up from baby food, mashed food, to he's going to give you some hearty meat. And it's going to be a bit more complex. It's going to be a bit more chewy. It's going to be a bit more uh, texture. It's going to be different. It might be a little mysterious, you know. But as long as you know God, you can follow him wherever he goes. The point is to know the spirit of God so he can lead you um, wherever he goes. So um, those are the steps. Acknowledge your state. Um, ask God to lead you to that nourishment. Ask him to be open to what he wants to show you and where he wants to where he wants to lead you. And third, when you have been full, when you have been fed, when you've been healed and you are whole, Go back, go back and give your light and presence to those who are spiritually dying in the church. Go back and share the news. All right. I hope this, this has been a blessing. Um, if you guys want to like comment, please do so. If you've experienced church hurt, if you're sick and tired, if you want prayer or anything like that, I am so down to help because I know it's real when you're going through that season. Um, when you're going through that season of feeling like you've hit a spiritual plateau, I've been there and I'm so glad that I went through it and I feel so full now. And now I could just give back you know, in my church online, wherever it is, I could, I could give back. So I love you guys. Please comment, like, subscribe. Okay. So that, um, you know, we, you know, I can be motivated to keep this up. I love you. I hope this has been a blessing. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful week. Stay encouraged and stay with God. Love you guys. Bye.